The topic of chapter four is a really important concept in statistics, and that is a concept of likelihood. And the way I'm going to explain that is by example. So I've made up a rather trivial example. I'm assuming I've got some academic department that I'm going to re refer to as Department X. And one I'm wondering about is whether or not there's an equal number of females and males in that department. So what I've done is a very simple study. I've gone out and sampled n equals 30 individuals from that department and discovered that there's 22 females and eight males. And so what I want to do is use this information to draw inferences about gender equality in Department X. And I'm going to do this in two different ways. One is via a probability distribution. And secondly, via a likelihood function. And my hope is that by comparing these two ways of dealing with this issue, you'll come away with a decent understanding of what a likelihood function really is. I want to begin by a review, and I want to review null hypothesis statistical testing. So remember the example that we saw earlier. We had a bunch of cattle on a rangeland, and we wanted to test the null hypothesis that mu was equal to zero. So what was mu? Mu was the difference in plant cover between plots that were accessible by the cattle and plots that were inaccessible by the cattle. So we set up these nine different plots. So we had n is equal to nine. We calculated the average difference in plant cover between these two treatments and found that y bar was equal to one, that s was equal to 1.2. And so then we went ahead and calculated y bar minus our null hypothesis, which was zero, divided by s over root n. That was equal to our t value, and that turned out to be 2.5. When we consulted our t table, we determined that a t value of 2.5 associated with eight degrees of freedom turned out to be equal to 0 0.020. And so therefore, we rejected our null hypothesis that the cattle weren't having any effect in favor of an alternative hypothesis that said the cattle, in fact, were reducing plant cover. So now what I want to try to argue is that the case where we've got 22 females in a sample of n is equal to 30, that that is a binomial distribution. And remember, we did the binomial distribution earlier when we had the marbles, and we had the sack, and we had the three red, and the one white marble, and we drew those marbles out at random in a series of n is equal to five independent trials, and we pursued this idea of a probability distribution. using the binomial as an example. So now what I want to argue is that the experiment that we just did, or the study we just did, with 22 out of the 30 sample individuals being female, that that is a binomial distribution. So what are the features of a binomial distribution? First is binary outcomes. In other words, there's only two possible outcomes, alive or dead, true or false, success or failure, and in this case, male or female. Now, somewhat arbitrarily, I've decided that success is going to be the occurrence of a female. So we've got n independent trials. When we did our marble experiment, and it was equal to five, because we withdrew a marble, recorded its color, put it back. Very similar things happening here. Instead of marbles, we've got human beings. And so now we're going to have n is equal to 30 independent trials, because instead of sampling five different marbles, we're sampling 30 different individuals. Now, in this particular example, the requirement that our trials be independent isn't exactly met. So if you remember our marble experiment, 
every time a marble was taken, its color recorded, it was stuck back. So it's a marble that had been captured once and recorded could potentially be captured again and recorded. The same is not going to be true in this particular case, which means to some extent the requirement of independence is going to be slightly violated. This is not going to be a big deal as long as the number of individuals sampled is relatively small compared to the total number of individuals in the department. So don't worry about this too much. Just a very fine point that although we've slightly violated one of our assumptions, it's not a big deal. So we've got our, in a binomial distribution, we've got this random variable y, which is set of all possible values of lowercase y, which is the number of successes. So this lowercase value of y is going to be equal to is going to be equal to the number of females whoops, that would be a male, number of females in n equals 30 trials. Our null hypothesis is that pi is equal to 0 0.5. In other words, our null hypothesis is that there's equal numbers of male and female. And we're going to assume that that is constant for all the trials. So to proceed, we're going to consider the probability distribution, P at Y, and that's going to be equal to that if we've got a binomial distribution. A couple of important points to note is that this value here is pi, is equal to 0 0.5, and therefore 1 minus pi is also equal to 0 0.5. And so this is our null hypothesis. an equal number of males and females in the population. And so this value here, this 30, what's that equal to? That's equal to n. That's the number of individuals that we sample. And what's y? What's y is, is that's the number of females we find in our sample of 30 individuals. So we've got this formula. And what we do is plug in the value of 0 for y, and then the value for 1 for y, and then all the way through up to the value of 30 for y, and that allows us to produce this plot. So we're going to assume pi is equal to 0 0.5. That's our null hypothesis. We know that n is equal to 30. So using this formula, we produce this probability distribution. On the x-axis, we've got number of females going from 0 to 30, and what we have on the y-axis, what we have on the y-axis is the probability distribution. So, what did we find when we did our study? We found when we did our study that there were 22 females. So, look, look at this. What's the probability of getting 22 or more females if the null hypothesis that pi is equal to 0 0.5 is true? Well, the probability of getting 22 or more females, if this is true, is only 0 0.0261. And that's what we do is we're going to reject the null hypothesis of equal numbers, male and females, and we're going to decide that, in fact, there are a disproportionately number of females in that department. So now what I want to do is make a comparison between a probability distribution and a likelihood function and argue that we can think of the likelihood function as being a flip or a reversal of the probability distribution. So again, think of what we did back here. Think of what we had here. What we had here was an assumption that the parameter pi was equal to 0 0.5. That was our null hypothesis. And then we varied y. y varied from 0 to 30. And then what went on the y-axis, went on that y-axis, was what the probability distribution gave us when we plumped in those different values of y. So that's what we just did. So that's what we just did. And so the main point is that we held pi constant at 0 0.5 and what we saw on the x-axis are the different values of y. Remember, y is the number of females as it went from 0 to 30. So the whole idea is that likelihood is a flipped probability.
So here, pi was held constant at 0 0.5. Whereas in the case of the likelihood function, you know, what's going to go on the y-axis is going to be the same. In both cases, the y-axis is going to be the same. But in the case of probability, pi was held constant. Now what we're going to do is hold the, this value y, number of females, we're going to hold that constant at 22. Now, in the case of probability, what we had on the x-axis was number of females. And that varied from 0 to 30. In this case, what's going to go on the x-axis is the value of our parameter pi. Remember, up here it was held constant, but now the value of parameter pi is going to change, and it's going to change over its entire range from 0 to 1. So how did I actually do this? Well, the way I actually did that was I wrote some code. So here's some code. Here's the code that I wrote. And don't worry about the details, but you can go to sort of get a sense of what's going on. This 0 to 1. So these are the values of pi. And they started off at 0, and they went to 1 by increments of 0 0.01. And then wrote a bunch of code to calculate the probability of getting 22 females. So I'm holding that constant. 22 females given that sample size was 30. And the result of all this code was to produce a data frame that has these two variables. One is the value of pi that starts off at 0 and goes all the way to 1. I'm going to assume that y was held constant at 22. So throughout this, y is held constant in 22 and it's held constant at 30. And what I get in this column is this particular value here. So that enables me to draw this plot it has, this is what's on the y-axis. What I'm assuming is that pi is going to vary. So pi is varying. That goes on the x-axis from 0 to 1, to 1. And y, the number of females, is held constant at 22. So now we can compare explicitly the probability distribution and a likelihood function and see that in both cases what goes on the y-axis is the same. However, in the case of the probability distribution, we held pi constant at 0 0.5 or a null hypothesis. What changed was the number of females. So what changed was y, the number of females. Whereas in the case of the likelihood function, what's constant is the number of females is held constant at 22. And what changes is the value of pi on the x-axis that goes over its entire range of 0 to 1. And when you look at this, if we go back up, you can see, for example, the outcomes so that when the value of pi is 0 0.5, This thing here turns out to be 0 0.055. And when pi is equal to 0 0.73, the probability shown on the y-axis is 0 0.163. So we'll stop there.